<laughs> well, so the Rockies are on there with Jim Keith. Uh, good, good, good morning, actually. Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Cougar. Good morning, actually. Good morning. In Tigard, Oregon. All right. Um, I was. Uh, first of all, I have a couple questions. Um, I was referred to by a person who thought that you could help me out. I've been looking for a long time to find someone who could have, like, help me get to a UFO group um, talk thing to help them talk about what happened or a hypnotist. But I was told the hypnotist costs a lot of money, and I don't have a lot of money. And I want to take um, – because I remember a lot of stuff consciously, but there's also a lot of stuff I know happens that I don't remember anything about it. All right. Does any of it involve the men in black? Yes, it does. In um, what way? Um, well, there was um, – in the Tiger Woods, uh, Tiger Woods and the railroad tracks, um, me and about three or four other people were living on the streets four summers ago, and we had tents. We had two tents, and we lived in the woods there. Yeah. And – we had some weird events happen for the past two, three nights. Uh, the first of all, it passed off as a, a humongous red, last orange ball of light hit diagonally. Or it had made of light out once it hit the ground, and I'm talking light out once it hit the ground, and everywhere, and it made no sound. And then about it, and it better we decided to go back to sleep. About it, and it better we decided to go back to work because I was started seeing something that bright. So we go back to work because it would kind of make make us wake up. Sure. And kind of make it make us woke up because I heard some footsteps to make us and uh, leaves crunching and twigs snapping. Yes. So I woke up Tom, and I, I he woke up and he, I said, "Did you hear that?" He said, "No." I said, "What are you hearing?" He, he was he he basically was awake, but he was asleep when he was when he was talking to me. I understand. And he said, "Just go back to sleep." And then it happened again. And it got loud, and then it, then it brushing against the tent. And the noise. Yes. They, they, the the what side. Brushed against the tent. And why would you think this would be a man in black? Well, no, this is this is this think this would... of it. This is the beginning. All right. Well, we don't have a lot of think this would of it. This be the man well, in black. Well, okay. Well, you have to skip all that part. And the tiger, um, we, um, and over tiger, uh, tiger, um, we, um, you, I have a tiger, uh, tiger, um, we, um, you, I have a tiger, uh, tiger, um, we, um, you, I have a tiger. Where you could see the part, you could not even see through the the uh, mirror thing. Uh, it was like a mirror. Uh, glass for them to see through. Yeah. Uh, it was just like a reflection of you. It didn't show anything inside. It was all black. And it was painted the black. It had no markings. Black. And it was painted the black. There would be also people in black and black, dark black short sunglasses and, and nice ties and everything, but all black. And, and then. And they t- were taking pictures of, of the people who were involved and what happened. And, but I don't know how know I don't know how they know that happened because the only people know is now you, my mom, and the people who it happened with my brother. All right. Well, I appreciate the story. Men in black. Men in black. Um, <laughs> he mentioned a mirror. I somebody sent me a, a message uh, uh, earlier in the day. This is totally unrelated. Uh, with the accounts uh, for the accident to the Mirror Space Station. Uh, there was, uh, there's a sign up there somewhere that says objects, uh, in the mirror, uh, appear to be closer, uh, may be closer than they appear to be. <laughs> the accident of the mirror. First time going to the accident of the guy. Hey, Art, how you doing? Um, well, I'm right. <laughs> well, I listen to you religiously every night on my way home from work at 4 a.m. here in, uh, Oklahoma. And, uh, I've been waiting for this Men in Black episode. All right, well, here we are. Uh, in 1984, um, I was, I guess in third grade, I was eight. And, um, yeah, I'm a young one. So, uh, I, we lived in White Sands, the yes, range, Right. On the base. Right. My dad, my stepfather was a photographer for the army there, and my mom worked in some place through high security. I really have no idea what she did in there. And, um, one day we were out cook, cooking out in the backyard, and I had a tetherball. Thing out there, and I was beating the tetherball around, and my stepfather was cooking steaks. And if you know anything about White Sands, the houses are like right next to the mountain, in the mountain ranges, right there in the Rockies. And uh, it was about 5:30 at night, mm-hmm. 6:30 at night, something like that. It was right before dusk, and a couple hours before dusk, and during the summer. And a white light uh, started from the left side of the mountains and ran towards the right side. I guess it went from south to north. And then stopped and shot in the, to the middle of the mountains on the other, on the Las Cruces side of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Well, we, I mean, our neighbors had even seen it because everybody was cooking out that day. It was kind of one of those days. 
and my mom ran in and called the military police. And um, they, she came back saying that the person was kind of rude and really fast talking. She said they'd been flooded with calls about this, and that uh, people, thousands of people from Las Cruces, had even called them wondering about this because there's always some kind of test thing going on. Massive sighting. And um, it, and they said, no, don't worry about it. You know, it's probably nothing. About an hour later, there's a mountain road. It's a mountain pass road. It goes right over the mountain. Yes. And it just leads all the way up and goes down the other side. We saw a caravan of trucks, a big flatbed truck, and little vans and things like that, Army, of course, coming from the base. It goes over the pass, and an hour after that, it came back with something on the flatbed truck under a cover. And you can see that all of this from, you know, because it's, it's a really small place, White Sands is. Uh-huh. It's right next to the road and everything. So they had it, whatever it was. Yeah, whatever. I have no idea what it was. And um, then I was playing tetherball later that night, right before it got dark, and we had already eaten and everything. And I looked inside, and uh, my mom and my dad were talking to a man in a black suit with a black tie. And um, this other guy was in an army suit. No. He was in, I, don't, I can't remember whether it was BDUs or whether it was um, dress greens. But I remember he was in a, it reminded me of something out of like a 50s sci-fi movie. <laughs> you know? Um, and it was like an escort or something. And uh, I just remember them sitting on the couch in our living room talking. And I could see him through the back window. And I was playing tetherball. I could, I mean, it was like the big thing at my school. I didn't care. I was just playing tetherball. And I don't know, my mom was really freaked out about the light and everything. She always would talk to me. She was talking to me that whole night about it. And they came back out, and I was like, who are those people? And my mom's like, oh, some people I work with. And uh, <laughs> then she goes, uh, uh, she was talking about it, and she goes, that light was just a, another one of the war games that they're playing on the mountains. And, uh, which they do about every weekend. So you know? you're suggesting that was your... Uh, experience, your family's experience with men in black. Yeah. Um, cause this light was not a war game. I'm sorry. I've seen war games. My dad was a military police. I understand. Yeah. All right. Well, um, is that, again, that's fairly typical, I guess, Jim, when something unusual happens, a sighting, uh, something that might be related to military, is clearly at White Sands, probably was related to some secret thing or another. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they, they come around and visit you. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I do believe that, um, I believe there there is something um, of an ultra-terrestrial nature in terms of flying saucers and in terms of aliens. I don't think there's any proof that it's extraterrestrial, but I think there is a, a paranormal aspect, as I keep repeating, um, like the men in black. But I also think the government has an interest in covering up the secret things that they're doing and covering up their advanced technology. And part of that is by putting out information that suggests that all UFOs are extraterrestrials, um, and having people think of uh, these kind of exotic craft only in terms of bug-eyed aliens. Well, again, uh, if you wanted to silence somebody, you're not going to wear a loud sport coat and a striped tie and arrive in an orange car. Dark, black, silent, uh, scary, that intimidates. Right. There's simply no question about it. Um, what is your next book, Jim? I'm working on a, a book about mind control right now. It's called um, Mind Control, World Control, and it uh, deals specifically with um, long-term projects by the CIA, uh, such as MK Ultra, yes. uh, involved in manipulating people and so forth, um, and, and really a history of mind control um, in this world going back to uh, early experiments around the, the uh, turn of this century and uh, up, up to the present and trying to delve into what is true and what is uh, falsification and rumor. Yep, the difference between truth and myth. All right, hang tight. We'll be right back, Jim. For my comfort level, Jim, why are we getting so much response? You know, I'm very, I'm very impressed by the quality of response in terms of uh, people who have called in. Uh, almost one for one, yeah. uh, they sound credible and uh, and spooky, and I, I'm very impressed as well. I mean, I'm I'm surprised. Um, and thinking about this, um, if if a survey was done, there must be hundreds of thousands of stories about men in black um, uh, around the world. I mean, I personally had no idea that uh, there were so many encounters. I'm, I'm still trying to contemplate the nights of the apocalypse. All right, uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Jim Keith. Good morning. Good morning, Art. 
This, my name is Linda. Hi, Linda. I'm calling from Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. And this event happened in early, the first week of June of 1975. <clears throat> I was at my mother's house, and um, our, our first child was about five months old. My dad and my brother and my husband were all watching something on TV, and it was getting towards her bedtime, and she was getting fussy, and I wanted to go, so my, who, my future sister-in-law and I.